Good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. I welcome you into this sacred hour of worship. My name is Kai. I am the pastor at Worland and Tensleep United Methodist Churches. I welcome all who are tuning in online. I'm very glad that you are here with us. This candle, this lighted candle, symbolizes the presence of Christ wherever you are gathered to worship Him this morning. Before we go any further, let me make two announcements. As the virus continues to spread, sadly, uh, it is best that we remain at home and stay safe. And so our church, our churches, will remain closed until further notice. Our plans to have a guest speaker speak to us on Easter Sunday is canceled, and we have new plans in its place. Tensely folks, we will join with the Baptist Church and the Assembly of God Church to have a drive-in service in the morning of Easter Sunday. Worland folks, we will continue with this virtual worship experience. Dear friends, we will celebrate joyfully the resurrection of our Lord and Savior on Easter Sunday, even during this depressing time. So join us, make time to worship uh, together. I have picked some songs from the request that you have made. The first song we will sing is, I Know Whom I Have Believed. Please turn to hymnal number 714. 714, I Know Whom I Have Believed, Cheryl will lead us into singing.
My message this morning is entitled "Speaking Life into Brokenness." Speaking life into brokenness. The scripture text is Ezekiel chapter thirty-seven, verses one through ten. Ezekiel thirty-seven, verses one through ten. Hear the word of God. The Lord's power overcame me, and while I was in the Lord's spirit, He led me out and set me down in the middle of a certain valley. It was full of bones. He led me through them all around, and I saw that there was there were a great many of them on the valley floor, and they were very dry. He asked me, "Human one, can these bones live again?" I said, "Lord God, only you know." He said to me, "Prophesy over these bones and say to them, 'Dry bones, hear the Lord's word. The Lord God proclaims to these bones, 'I am about to put breath in you, and you will live again. I will put sinews on you, place flesh on you, and cover you with skin.'" When I put breath in you and you come to life, you will know that I am the Lord. I prophesied just as I was commanded. There was a great noise as I was prophesying, then a great quaking, and the bones came together, bone by bone. When I looked, suddenly there were sinews on them; the flesh appeared. And then they they were covered over with skin, but there were there was still no breath in them. He said to me, "Prophesy to the breath, prophesy, human one. Say to the breath, the Lord God proclaims, 'Come from the four winds, breath. Breathe into these dead both bodies and let them live.' I prophesied." Just as he commanded me, when the breath entered them, they came to life and stood on their feet, an extraordinarily large company. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Every day we are waking up to pieces of sad news in the newspaper and in social media. But in the midst of this sad news, we are also get, getting some good news, which gives us hope. Although COVID-19 cases is rising in this country right now, there is a strong hope that this rising will cease. This virus will be contained and controlled, and normal functions of life will resume. Our confidence in, that life will return is boosted by the news in China. It was reported the other day that China recorded, for the first time, of no new cases of COVID-19 in the last three months of battling this virus. I also read somewhere that in China, industries are reopening. And workers are returning to work. The epicenter is finally easing back to life. Our time will also come when we will overcome the virus. In the scripture text for today, the Israelite community is in Babylon in captivity. This exiled commun- community finds themselves. Forced into a strange place, a strange land, and a strange culture, where they cannot feel at home. I bet all of us are feeling like this exiled community. Indeed, this is a strange time in our history, a strange place to be in. The Israelites long to return to their homeland. But the ruling Babylonian government is so powerful and mighty that their hopes are dashed to the ground. Besides, 
There is no home they can return to because the Babylonians' military has plundered Jerusalem, the capital city, and completely destroyed the temple, the center of religious and community life of the Israelites. Jürgen Moltmann, a German theologian, by the way, one of my favorite theologians, has this to say, totally without hope, one cannot live. To live without hope is to cease to live. The hope of ever returning to their homeland is shattered. The scripture tells us that the Israelite community is like a valley of dry bones. This young prophet Ezekiel saw a vision where the Spirit of the Lord lifted him up and placed him in the middle of a valley full of utterly dried bones. These bones have been exposed in the open for so long that they are bleached by the sun. God likens the house of Israel to this valley of dry bones because the Israelites have ceased to believe in better days ahead of them. They have no feeling that life is going to get better. They have lost the desire of looking forward to tomorrow, the day after, or the week, the next week. Thus, to live without hope is to cease to live, like Maltman says. Because without hope, that gives momentum, energy, and inspiration, life comes to a grinding halt. Thus, Maltman says that hell is a place where there is no hope. The most powerful message that the scripture today con conveys to us is not about a community that has lost hope. No. Instead, it is about it is about God and what God does with this hopeless community. For you see, from this broken community, God raises a young prophet called Ezekiel to lead the people during this difficult time in the history of Israel. Into the dry bones came the breath of life. To this people in bondage, God makes a promise to rescue. Notice that God meets with the Israelites at a particular point. This is the point of surrender. This is the point of yielding. This is the point where Israelites surrenders everything to God, including their lives, plans and expectations, agendas and goals, and yield completely their will to the will of God. Before God could rescue the Israelites, the Israelites must give up trying to rescue themselves. They have to quit fighting for themselves and admit, as in verse 11, our bones are dried up, our hope are lost, we are cut off completely. God uses this brokenness to glorify His name. This is the beauty of brokenness that King David talks about in Psalm number 51, 17. Jeremiah talks about it 
in chapter 17, verse 14. Paul talks about it in Romans chapter 8, verses 28 through 31. In Ezekiel, God says that he will form a new community of faith out of this brokenness, out of these shattered dreams, out of these shattered broken hopes. God is form, will form and reconstruct a new reality for his glory. Not for Israel's glory, not for human's glory, but for God's glory. The first point I want to make is receiving words of life into your brokenness. Receiving words of life into your brokenness. As Ezekiel is looking at these completely dried bones in the valley, God tests him with a question. Can these bones live again? Ezekiel replies, Lord God, only you know. Lord God, only you know. This is how a surrendered person responds. This is what a surrendered person looks like. Then the Lord commanded, Prophesy over these bones. God directs Ezekiel to speak words of life over these dry, bone, dry bones. I wonder what brokenness might you have as you come to worship the Lord this morning? I wonder what grievances do you want to lift up to God today? I also wonder if you are making time to receive words of life from the Bible. I wonder if you open up yourself to allow God to speak into your heart. I encourage you to get into the posture of receiving through meditation, through reading the scripture, prayer, quieting your heart to listen for the voice of God. We need to receive the words of life, to receive inner peace, courage, and hope in the midst of this difficult situation. Speaking life into another is my second point. Speaking life into another. Jesus commands us to love our neighbors as ourselves. One way of showing love during this time is by speaking life into others. Apostle Paul is excellent in speaking life into others. And this is exactly what he did to the Thessalonians community. He says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 2 and 3, we always thank you for all of you and continually mention you in our prayers. We remember before our God and Father your work produced by faith, your labor prompted by love, and your endurance inspired by hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. He pour words of appreciation into the Thessalonian community. Is there anyone around you who has been patient, kind, and loving to you? Express your appreciation to them. When you go to Blair's Market, make sure to convey your deep appreciation to the staff for their services. They are risking their lives every day to serve our community 
And the least we can do is to say thank you so much. Speak words of affirmation to others. This is what Paul says in verse 4. Brothers and sisters, you are loved by God, and we know that He has chosen you. With these words of appreciation, affirmation, excuse me, Paul reminds the Thessalonians who they are. They are the beloved of God. Is there someone God is calling you to speak a word of appreciation? It may be a family member, a friend, or a neighbor. 